All right, welcome everybody. Um, really happy to be here. Uh, two and a half years sitting at home, looking at a, a video of people, little boxes. It's really great to see all the faces uh, and all the people. So welcome to the Hyperledger Global Forum. So as you are all aware, Danielle already mentioned what the landscape looks like within Hyperledger. We do have six projects that have graduated and we have nine projects that are incubated. So since the last time we met, which was virtually, those little uh, videos on the, the screen, uh, we've had three new projects that have been added to Hyperledger. So three new projects are Hyperledger Bevel, Hyperledger Firefly, and the newest one, Hyperledger Solang. We've also end of life four different projects. Hyperledger Burl, Hyperledger Avalon, Hyperledger Explorer, and Hyperledger Quilt. So I want to take the opportunity here to thank all of the maintainers, contributors, and users of these projects. Without you, we wouldn't have this community. So thank you to those present and past who have contributed and maintained these projects. So let's talk about these three new projects. The first one, and the one that has been incubated just this past August, is Hyperledger Solang. This project started as a lab in 2019. It is a Solidity compiler for Solana, Substrate, and eWASM. It uses the LLVM compiler framework, and it is source compatible with Solidity version 0.8. We also have Hyperledger Bevel. Hyperledger Bevel also started as a lab. It was contributed by Accenture, and it was incubated in December of 2021. This project is a project that is focused on rapidly deploying production-ready blockchain networks. Blockchain networks such as Hyperledger Fabric, Hyperledger Indy, Hyperledger Basu, Quorum, and Corda. We have Hyperledger Firefly. Hyperledger Firefly also started as a lab. Uh, it was incubated in September of 2021 and contributed by Kaleido. This project is designed to help simplify the on-chain and off-chain logic that we have within our blockchain applications. It had a version 1.0 release in April of 2022. So besides all of the projects, we have Hyperledger Labs. So Daniela mentioned this earlier. It's a place for us to experiment and test out new ideas and innovate. It's a place where we can easily start coding and building a community of people whereby you don't have to go through the process of coming to the TSC and doing a proposal, a project proposal. So this is places where your code might be young, it might be hackathon code, it might be test code, it might be experimentation code that you have for an existing framework or a new framework. It could be research code, it could be internship code, it could be code that you want to eventually become a top level project within Hyperledger. And as such, we've actually had five different projects that are currently top level projects that started in Hyperledger Labs. The last four of those projects that we've incubated have come from Hyperledger Labs. It's a great spot for you to contribute whatever it is that you're thinking about. These projects, these labs here that we have, 50 plus repositories that exist in GitHub that are focused on things like deployment, operating net, your, your blockchain networks. It's focused on things like interoperability, development tools. Anything that you can think about in the blockchain space, you can probably find a repo in Hyperledger Labs that is focused on that. So Daniela kind of mentioned what the TSC does. It's focused on the technical community. It's focused on understanding what we're doing in the technical community. We're focused on things like task forces, deciding how, which projects we incubate in Hyperledger, 
Uh, we focus on the governance aspects of Hyperledger. So let me tell you about the sort of things that we've been doing in the past year. So how many people use the chat system within Hyperledger? Yeah. So we recently moved from Rocket Chat to Discord. So there should be a lot of communication that you see happening in those chat channels within Discord. We did that through a task force. We got a group of people together to decide what was the right tools and technologies that could be used to ensure that the community is inclusive and that people can participate. We also have a security task force that's ongoing, looking at the security of the different blockchain projects that we have and how we can make those projects better. One of the things that came out of that security task force was uh, some approved security related mandates for projects that move from incubation to graduation. Besides the security task force, we also have the project gaps task force that's going on and a project health task force that's going on. These task forces typically happen uh, at least a half an hour of time within uh, our TSC meeting that happen US Pacific, 7 a.m. Please join, participate in these task forces, and participate in the calls that we're having. As far as project focus, I already mentioned that on the first slide. Three new projects that we've approved for incubation, and four projects that we've moved to end of life. Then for governance, the sorts of things that we're focused on with governance, we approved some DCI working group mandates uh, to help improve the inclusive nature of our projects and our documentation. We've documented and approved the TSC responsibilities because we thought it would be good for people to understand when they run for the TSC, what is it that they're signing up to do? So there's now a list of things that we actually do day to day, week to week in those sorts of meetings. We approved a default maintainer's inactivity policy so when our maintainers move on to another project or they move on to another company, they may become inactive. And we want to make sure that those projects are moved to an emeritus status so that we know who the people are that we need to contact when we're dealing with those projects. We've approved some new lab stewards. So as I mentioned, we have the Hyperledger lab space. Uh, within that lab space, we have five stewards that will review the proposals that come in easy form that you have to fill out, make sure that they fit with the Hyperledger ecosystem and decide what those projects are, those labs are that come in. And then the last thing that we've done is that we've recommended that we rename the TSC from Technical Steering Committee to Technical Oversight Committee. The idea here is that we want to ensure that people understand what this group is actually doing. It's more oversight than it is steering and so we wanted to make sure that that was clear. And then the last thing that I like to do is make sure that everybody knows that they are welcome to participate. This is my call out to you. Nobody has an excuse anymore that they haven't gotten an invite. This is my invite to you to participate in the community. There are different ways that you can participate and get involved. You can join one of our community meetings. There's a schedule of those that are on the wiki, wiki.hyperledger.org. There's a calendar where you can go find out all of the meetings that are happening. You can contribute to a project or a lab. A number of our projects and our labs have good first issues where you can take a look at those issues and work on those and get those contributed to help improve those projects and labs. You can write a blog. Do a developer showcase. Whatever it is that you're doing with the Hyperledger projects or the Hyperledger labs, let people know about it. This is a good way of doing that. And then lastly, the Dev Weekly developer newsletter goes out weekly to thousands of Hyperledger developers. You're doing something in the Hyperledger community that you want developers to know about. This is the place to contribute content. It's also a place to subscribe and find out what people are doing. So with that, I am right on time. <laughs> Going to let you guys enjoy the rest of the conference and uh, happy to be here. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs>